Blessings, everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is Brother Odane from Restores of Truth Ministries, and I'm back to give uh, another teaching that the Lord has laid on my heart um, to give, which, you know, this is important for, you know, many to know. And, you know, throughout, you know, throughout my walk, I've just been meditating on a lot of things, you know, why a lot of, you know, Christians, professing Christians, you know, why, you know, they're living in sin, they're in bondage and um, things in that nature. A lot of things that's going on, you know, wh where's the lack of power, you know, in Christendom and, you know, why we're not you know, functioning like the early church. As you read the book of Acts, you know, things in that nature I've been, um, you know, reflecting on. But, you know, the Lord has been giving me revelation on certain things, you know, um, you know, I spoke on this with certain things with people. Never actually did a teaching on it until, you know, today, which, you know, we're going to dive into certain things, you know, so we can get a proper understanding, you know, basically, you know, when the gospels preach, when a person comes to Christ, what next? You know, there's a lot of falsehoods being preached, you know, false, you know, assumptions, speculations, whatever you want to call it. And it's... It's causing a lot of um, so-called Christians, people who you know, came to Christ, you know, to live in a and live in error, you know, live in a form of deception, you know, if that makes sense. All right. So what, what am I getting to? What am I getting to? All right. This teaching is going to be about, you know, receiving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the comforter. The spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of truth. All right. And a lot of people, you know, professing Christians, you know, I've, I've come across them. Many believe, you know, you say this magic prayer. All right. Somebody comes to you, you know, say this prayer, blah, blah. You know, you say this prayer, see Jesus Christ. And they believe, boom, you know, uh, I'm born again. I have the Holy Spirit. They have the Holy Spirit. And that's not the case. And it's because they miss this very important key that the Bible speaks about. All right. We're going to we're going to get into all of that. A very important key, a prerequisite for receiving the Holy Spirit, for receiving the spirit of God to dwell in you. God's spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's spirit, the spirit of the father and the spirit of Christ. All right. We're going to get to all of that. All right, first things first, you know, it's definitely subscribe to this channel, like, share this video, because this, this, this is going to be important. This is going to be very important. All right, so I'm definitely going to be sharing my screen. First things first, we're, we're going to read from Matthew chapter 25, all right? This parable is about the 10 virgins, and this parable is key, what Jesus is describing, all right? Five were wise, five were foolish and there was one important factor that separated the two groups all right we're gonna read all this and we to my screen load up all right so i'm hoping you guys can now see the screen all right so i'm coming from matthew 25 i'm gonna be reading from the king's james version all right and it reads then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. All right, so pay attention. They took their lamps. These parables, all parables are, are an earthly story. All right, earthly story that has a spiritual meaning to it. That's conveying a spiritual truth. I have to pay attention to, all right? Earthly story that has a spiritual meaning, conveying a spiritual truth. All right. So then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bride. Verse two, five of them were wise and five were foolish. All right. So what made one wise and what made one foolish? Here we go. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. All right. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, 
give us your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while the, they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. We're in the Son of Man coming. So I'm going to stop right there, verse 13. All right. So as we can see, there's 10 virgins, two groups, one wise, one foolish. All right. However, the foolish ones, they had lamps, but they had no oil. Wise ones, as you see, had the oil in their vessels, the oil. That's what made them different. All right. They had the oil. And this is describing Christians, all right? This is describing Christians, people who are, you know, professing Christ, say they believe in Jesus Christ, all right? But there's many out there that they have no oil. They have no oil. They believe they do, but they don't, all right? The oil represents the Holy Spirit. Throughout the scriptures, even in the Old Testament, the oil rep always represented the anointing of God, the Holy Spirit of God, and the power of God coming upon a person, whether, 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 you know, living in a person in a New Testament or the Old Testament, you know, coming upon somebody. But nevertheless, this is what I want to address. The Lord said he doesn't know them. All right. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8 says that if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So what is the problem? What is the issue? How is it that Christians, you know, many don't have the Holy Spirit, but they believe they do? How does one receive the Holy Spirit? That is the question. And this is what I wanted to talk about. The prerequisite. All right. Right now, I'm going to turn to John chapter 14. All right. The prerequisite. This is the problem. This is what a lot of people, they don't teach, whether they're on the streets, you know, street witnessing, whether they're in the churches, you know, they, they, they teach, say a certain prayer, this and that, boom, you're saved. Or they just say, you know, just call upon the name of the Lord, this and that to say, but they don't preach the, the prerequisites. All right. So this is it. John 14, pay attention. Verses 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them. All right. He it is that loveth me and he that loves me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Now, listen. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Jesus said, we will come to him, the father and the son. All right. The father and Jesus Christ, they will come and make their abode with those who keeps his words. All right. What is an abode? Abode means a dwelling place, meaning they're going to come and dwell with you, in you, live in you. That is Holy Spirit. The prerequisite is keeping Christ's commandments, obeying the word first, obeying the word first. All right. Let's go up to Acts chapter five. All right. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. That obey him. Whom God has given to them that obey him. The prerequisite of receiving the Holy Spirit is obeying the word of God that you've heard. When a preacher comes, all right, let me just stop right here. Let me stop right there. I'm going to get back to sharing the screen. When a preacher comes and preach the word of God, all right, one of the um, <clears throat> subject matters in preaching that word to an unbeliever, somebody who hasn't come to Christ yet, <clears throat> is repentance. Repentance means 
to turn away from, change of heart, chain of mind, all right? It comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means a change of heart or a change of mind, all right? So when you're repenting from your sins, you have a change of mind towards those evil things you used to do. So that way you turn away from them and you no longer do those things anymore. All right. When a preacher preaches the word of God, the teachings of Jesus Christ, and he preaches repentance, it is expected of the person who hears this word and believes this word, believes upon Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died for their sins. It is expected that they now obey the teachings of Jesus Christ, obeying the word of God, changing their way of living, their lifestyle, no longer living in those sins, but turning from that and now living according to the word of God. When they begin to live that way, because of the word of God being planted in their hearts, their hearts are being cleansed, purified, made ready. And then God, in his own timing, will give that person the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2.38, all right, Acts 2.38, Peter said, repent, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Baptism is also important to get baptized well, but he says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, when Jesus came on the scene, he preached, repent, for the human heaven is ha as a hand. That's one of the things that people are lacking when they preach this word. They're not preaching repentance. They're not preaching repentance to turn from your sins. Sin came into this world because of Adam and Eve's disobedience to God. All right. And they took heed to the, to, to the serpent. All right. Eve was deceived. And Adam listened to his wife and they ate from the tree that God told him not to eat from. They sinned against God. Death came into this world. And because of that, all men are born into sin. But now, when you hear the word of God, the gospel, the Lord requires men to repent from their sins, turn from those evil ways now, and live according to God's word. Now, many people may say, right, people who may listen to hear this message, they may say, oh, what about Cornelius? He just believed the message that Peter, and he received the Holy Ghost. All right, well, first off, let's look at Cornelius' story real quick. Let's look at Cornelius' story so we can see and understand what is actually going on in that story. This is one of the things that people miss about Cornelius. All right. So I'm sharing this now. Acts chapter 10. Now, I want everybody to pay attention. This is a story about Cornelius. OK, here it is. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. OK. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now listen, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. People, they missed this part, which is key. Cornelius was a devout man and one that feared God. All right. Now let's skip down. Let's skip down to verse... I think it's all right here we all right here we go all right here we go i'm gonna start from verse 34 and it reads then peter opened his mouth and said of of truth i perceive that god is no respect of persons now listen but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him what is this all saying? Cornelius was already living a life of repentance. Cornelius already repented from his sins. He was a man who feared God, a just man, a devout man. He feared God. The fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Fearing God, reverence to him, living for him, giving arms to the poor. Those are Jesus' teachings. Cornelius was already living a life of repentance. All right. So now when Peter came and preached about Jesus Christ, Cornelius' heart was prepared to receive the Holy Spirit. A lot of Christians, 
you know, so-called Christians, they have not received the Holy Spirit because they have not began to live according to God's word, but yet they believe they are still saved. That is the grave deception in Christendom. That is why preachers such as myself and other people, when we preach these truths, many don't like to hear it because it's the truth. But only few will. Few will accept this truth. God sheep. But it's the truth. The prerequisite to receiving God's spirit, as I tied in John 14, go read back John 14, where Jesus said, keeping Christ's commandments, obeying his word, then you shall receive the Holy Spirit. All right? Then you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Those who are keeping Christ's commandments, obeying his word, they know God and God knows them. The Lord knows them. Remember the 10 foolish, the five foolish virgins, the Lord said, I don't know you. I don't know you. He doesn't belong to them, right? Because they don't have his spirit. They didn't have the oil, the oil, the oil. All right. Listen, we're not called to live in sin, to live according to our flesh. All right. If you're struggling with certain fleshly tendencies, keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again. You really have to submit yourself to Christ. All right. You really, really have to submit yourself to God, get into prayer, ask him to deliver you from that. And fast as well, prayer and fasting. And begin to live in accordance to God's word. All right. If you're doing these things, things that are not pleasing to God over and over, and you have no conviction in you, you think it's okay, you really got to examine your faith to see whether you even have the Holy Spirit. Because anytime you sin, God's Holy Spirit is going to convict you of sin. All right? That's a fact. Yes. So it's important that we examine ourselves. You know, there's a whole bunch of scriptures I could share, a whole bunch, but I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to keep it simple, short, straight to the point. All right. Many Christians believe they have the Holy Spirit, but they haven't had it. Many Christians believe they receive the Holy Spirit by saying just a simple prayer. No, 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 that's not in the scripture anywhere. Saying a simple prayer. Repent, turn from your sins, evil lifestyles, evil doings, any form of wickedness. Repent from it, turn from it, have a change of mind and begin to live in accordance to God's word, in accordance to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Be baptized as well in water and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because you repented and now you're living according to God's word. Remember in Acts, God gives his Holy Spirit to those who obey him. And then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And there's going to be a difference. I pray, all right, that you take heed to this word. I pray you take heed to it. All right. Search the scriptures I gave you. Take this to prayer. Ask God to show yourself. Examine yourself. Examine your life. All right. Any questions, definitely email me. You go to the YouTube channel and um, the about section, you'll find the email to this ministry. Email me with any questions. So subscribe to his YouTube channel, like, share this video as, video as well. All right. Many need to hear this word. Many need to hear this word. Anytime somebody's preaching the word, they must preach repentance. Repentance. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us as saints forevermore. Amen.